Welcome back to Metro Exodus. In the last episode, we got through the prologue, or at least most of it. We just got onto the train, not exactly sure where we're going next, but I guess we just gotta follow the tracks, and we are, I think, trying to get to a place called the Ark, which we heard on the radio. Some sort of a safe haven that supposedly exists. Before I get going, I want to mention some stuff that I changed, so sorry about the, the judderiness to the video in the last episode. Uh, that was caused by recording in the DirectX 12 mode. I had to switch it to DirectX 11. You can actually switch between the two in the menu. So that's fixed it and won't be juddery anymore. I also turned the graphics quality down from, I think it was on ultra, down to high and then medium is what I finally settled on. This game is very, very intensive, and even though I've got a pretty damn powerful computer, Ultra is way too much, and even High is actually a bit too much. So between the DirectX 11 and now being on medium settings, the video is going to be so much smoother. Oh, and also, I want to try having the audio language be Russian instead of English. So I switched over to Russian language with English subtitles. Let's go. I love these flippy floppy buttons, by the way. Like, you press continue and this thing goes ka-chunk. That's so cool. Мы-стоим-сотни-километров-от-Москвы-стоим-и-проверяем-дозиметры-потому-что-все-они-показывают-почти-нормальный-фон-будто-сговорились-но-это-потрясающая-новость-никого-особо-не-радует-ребята-не
И вы поверили? Ну как? Сначала показалось, проще будет поверить, а потом сорвался. Тогда садист мне прямо и говорит, расскажешь кому ну, все, кто слышал. Если надо, и всю станцию на тот свет отправим. Так вот и ездил с тех пор, стараясь в ту сторону не смотреть. А когда вы появились, и Артем потом, я понял, все, теперь я не один. Ну как такое в себе держать? Теперь понимаю, почему вы тогда нам помогли. Спасибо. Да чего уж тут? Дай бог выйдет из этого что-то крупное тебе. Да. А вам за город паровозы приходилось водить? Нет, дочка, не приходилось. Я ведь машинистом метропоезда был. Служил на кольцевой. Да, мутерное дело. По кругу и по кругу, по кругу и по кругу. И по кругу. А там что ехать-то? Раньше всю кольцевую проехать меньше часа. Вот я и думал. Хорошо бы, мол, из метро уволиться, да на железную дорогу. Не как крысы на ливеньке тыркаться обо всей России, матушке. Жена против была. Эти двое. Я как с ней не заведу про железную дорогу, про мечту свою. Она потом месяц со мной не спит. Протестует. Да. А, стрит пипл. закрыла. Татьяна моя, Сашенька и младший, тоже. Я был на службе, и Ришка ждала меня в метро. С курсов возвращалась. Так мы вдвоем и выжили. Но в конце концов я и ее потерял. Туберкулез. А, такие дела. Вот я машину иду, а сам с Татьяной моей разговариваю. Что, Таня? Все-таки не удержала ты меня. Вот он я. На настоящей железной дороге. Машинистом. Эх, да не лучше. I like your mark. Что-то я расчувствовался. Ну что вы? Это вы меня простите. И спасибо, что рассказали. Не, yeah, they're a cool character. Music. Don't you know about copyright claims on YouTube? I'm not gonna play any music. Can I just search the airwaves, actually? Oh, I can. Let's try to find another channel. See, this is what I love. This is one of the big things I love about the Metro series. Things like this, fiddly uh, buttons that you can actually move. I mean, look, look on the left side, you got my whole watch thing, all those little things showing you, like whether you detected in the light and how much time you've got left on your, on your filter. And then all these fiddly buttons that you can move to try to search for a station. I don't know, it just feels very satisfying and, and real and uh, tactile. You know, about as tactile as you can get without actually being able to really feel the things. That's all you're gonna get, Alyosha. Jesus. It was actually interesting that that was in English. Right? Since the voices are in Russian, that... I guess that tells us... something. That they probably weren't Russian? Or maybe they thought they were more likely to get help if they talked in English? More people to understand it, possibly? I don't know. Особый комитет по восстановлению... А, 
Already Where heard that. Sounded like something war related, since the war is apparently still going on. Nice. I like this song. Too bad I can't leave it on. Train got blow up. They're, they're talking about the train we blew up. Talking about us. Didn't mean to do that either. Yeah, I hope there weren't people related to uh, Miller and the Spartans and all that, like, related enough that other people would want to kill them uh, back at Moscow. Because if we left people like that behind, they're talking about rooting out the whole spy network, because I think Miller's uh, a spy now and all that stuff, then they're dead. It's gotta be such a shock to everybody on here that there's an entire world outside. Well, except for Miller, I suppose, since they knew for a little while. But everybody else, I mean, <laughs> no radio, in, any any sort of radio signals that we could read from Moscow because the jammer. We thought the entire world was dead. That we were pretty much the only people left alive. But no, there's all sorts of stuff happening all around. I'm probably not even going to get off this damn train or even leave this damn room in this entire episode. There's so much to do. Survey report to Head of Shield Project Railroad Department. Um, having conducted the railway state survey as per your order, I can report that beyond the defense perimeter, the rail railway is in condition ranging from acceptable to good thus presenting a security threat by providing a convenient way for the enemy to transport and supply their... whoops... supply their agents. On the other hand, within defense perimeter, the railway is worn down beyond acceptable state, which could lead to a complete halt of train movement along the most used lines in the nearest future. Putting defensibility of Moscow in grave danger by disrupting our lines of supply and reinforcement transportation. Considering aforementioned, I hereby request that all available maintenance crews are sent to work on repairing the most damaged sections of the critically important lines, using the rails and cross ties from the lines beyond the 101 kilometer mark from the center of Moscow. Thus, at the same time, effectively denying the enemy the use of the railways leading into the city. Deputy Head of the Special Survey Committee. 
Yeah, I was wondering about the state of the tracks. I mean, given the war and the explosions and the whole post-apocalyptic thing, I wouldn't expect the railway tracks to be in very good condition. It sounds like generally they are, but depending on how long ago this was and how much they were able to complete of it, it sounds like they were actually trying to sabotage the railway um, further outside of Moscow so that nobody could come into Moscow. Yeah, everything after 101 kilometer mark from the center of Moscow, they were going to harvest all that stuff and, and use it to repair the stuff closer to the city so they can travel within the city, but people from outside couldn't come in. Which means maybe we can't get out. I don't know. I noticed that this this uh, little counter thing here, which I saw kept popping up at the bottom right of the screen, and almost always just said zero, but it finally says 108, and it says kilometers, so... I've realized that that's our distance from Moscow. Which is super cool, and also 108 kilometers is greater than 101 kilometers, so... Maybe we're gonna... Maybe we're fine? Or maybe we're about to hit trouble? Can I help with that? A real connoisseur of unique weapons. So yeah, I think weapon durability is going to be an important thing. Oh, that is such a... I love the contrast on that. That is so cool looking. Firing the, the coal-powered engine. Oh, can I help? Guess I'm taking over. Yeah, you take a break, I got this. Yeah, this has got to be a miserable job, my god. Brutally hot and just dirty and ugh. I'm just gonna keep doing this to see if they say something else. I think that's it. Okay, let's leave. There you go. I wonder how often you have to actually have to throw coal into a, a thing like that. I mean, I know it depends on how fast you want to go and, you know, how much you're loaded down and whatnot, because that's basically the, the power in your engine. But... 
I mean, this train doesn't have anything hooked up behind it, it's just like one car. So I feel like constantly, literally never stopping, throwing into coal into it, I feel like that's just, like, way over the top. Surely this train doesn't need it. Okay, uh, let's go speak with Miller. I love that I can actually choose when to smoke. That's so cool. I love interactions like this. And of course, the cigarette isn't some fancy factory made thing. It's just some, you know, custom wrapped thing wrapped in, I don't know, what is it, newspaper or something? Yeah, I get it, Miller. At first, they seemed, you know, because they'd lied to us, seemed horrible, but given what they were told and what was kept from them and how they only knew recently, and... Uh, I get it. Oh, can we see those little joint things? And those legs? Spinning around when they go to walk? It's really cool. It's actually some articulation there. His legs are really interesting. Once again, more, like, cobbled together technology. Ah, oh, it's got to look at this. This is gorgeous. This is so cool. Будет последствия. И бросить цепь нельзя. 
И хлебать из ведра придется до дна. Вот и каково оно, чувствовать себя Моисеем, за цепь потянувшим. Ладно. Глупо человеку всю жизнь чужие приказы исполнявшему. О таком думать, да? Ну так на то я и идиот. А вот что будет на конце твоей цепи, все же интересно. Yeah, I only noticed like halfway through that conversation that their name is literally idiot. This game is just gorgeous. And at this point I've only seen probably like 2% of it. See what else I can do here. Use the radio, drink something, or read this thing. Let's have a drink. Drink physics, nice. Can I drink more? Because it looked empty. Oh, that's a nice detail. Oh, um... Actually, hold on. Can I turn the radio off? It's kind of annoying. Uh... I don't think so. Oh. Oh, yeah, there we go. Let me see. Diary, crew, new world, creatures, equipment, weapons... So what is this exactly? Diary. That's not the same diary that I can access from just the menu, right? Moscow, winter... When it has been years since anyone's heard anything but static and white noise on the radio, who could still believe we're not alone on this earth? My wife, my comrades from the Order, my friends, people from my station, nobody believes me. They're sure that there's nothing on the radio. Sure that, save for us, who hid in Moscow Metro, there were no survivors of the last war. We're alone on this planet, and in the Metro it's common knowledge. But I did hear that call on the radio with my own ears. Yes, it was immediately droned out by the static, but I had heard it. Which means that somewhere out there, under the skies, there's still a habitable place. We're not doomed to live in the rest of our to live the rest of our lives underground. Still, nobody believes me. We stopped a hundred Oh. Oh, this is the this is the diary that's actually read out in the loading screens. I see. Crew, descriptions of everybody. Oh, there's a rabbit drawn back there with some hearts over it. Aw. Any other cute drawings? Eagle? <laughs> God, they have a hell of a face, huh? Look at that scowl. They have... Oh, that's uh, like a, a quill and an ink pot back there. Yeah, Sam's American, aren't they? I'm not sure about them with the uh, spoken language set to Russian, but I remember before when it was set to English, they were the only one that actually had a, a notably American accent. Sam is one of the Order's best. He might not be the strongest, fastest, or the best marksman we have, but he can certainly hold his own in a match with Spartan champions in each of these areas, and he definitely is the most unusual of us. Sam is an American, a Marine from the U.S. Embassy's guard detail. We just happened to be in the Metro when the Judgment Day came, eventually ending up as Colonel Miller's personal bodyguard. Sam had to sit the battle for D6 out on the account of staying in a hospital with a serious wound, and was really hard on himself for not being there to protect the Colonel uh, when he was needed the most. As soon as he was back on his feet, still all bandaged, Sam would refuse to leave the Colonel's side no matter what. He wouldn't even let anybody else push Miller's wheelchair even when Andrew the Blacksmith made the amazing prosthetics the Colonel has been wearing ever since. 
Sam remained Miller's shadow and, of course, joined us aboard the Aurora. All of us, the crew members, are going somewhere to some kind of destination, as Yermak puts it. Even though none of us know where that destination would be. Sam, though, seems to know the place, if the world outside of Metro is not wiped out. There must be survivors in the U.S., and Sam can't stop thinking about his parents who might still be alive, waiting for their son. I wonder if he feels he's traveling in the right direction with us. Yeah, my god, in this in this world, where you can't just, you know, go to the airport and take a plane? Getting to the US from Russia? In this sort of a world? Jesus Christ. It's like a lifetime's journey, practically. I'll read the other people's descriptions later. New World. Exhibition. Hansa? Oh, are these factions? Because Hansa's the faction that tried to kill us. I'm gonna try my best to pronounce these Russian names. Exhibition, my home station, now a part of VDNKH, Commonwealth, together with uh, Alexeyevskaya and Ryskaya. Uh, Living there has been an uneven ride, but I still have fond memories of the time. Even though Anna, my wife, would disagree. She positively hated it there, having traded the position of the Order's best sniper for everyday chores of a regular mushroom farmer. <laughs> the job mushroom farmer just... I don't know, that sounds funny. Hansa. The most powerful faction of the Metro. The Commonwealth of the Stations of the Ring Line. The soldiers in Hansa's employ enjoy the best pay and equipment, and thus are highly motivated to train and perform their duties exceptionally well. Making up in proficiency and skill for what they may lack in numbers. The only force to be objectively better than Hensake troops in terms of professionalism and training is the Spartan Order, which yours truly is honored to be a member of. As far as I was able to surmise from the Colonel's reluctant confession, Hansa is the vehicle of the Invisible Watchers, the real government of Moscow, controlling uh, all the factions from the shadows that clearly have too much power to just live and let live, and thus engaged in some shady business including the SHIELD project designed to keep Moscow under an impenetrable blanket of radio jamming to prevent further nuclear strikes against the capital. The project itself would be a benevolent initiative even if quite misguided had it not been connected with mass murder of people coming into or trying to leave Moscow, as well as anyone and everyone learning anything about it. Anna and I were captured by the patrol after we saw the Aurora entering the city perimeter, and just for that terrible crime I was put to the gun. Anna's agony at the moment is something I will not forgive them for as long as I live. Creatures. I don't think we need to read about them. We have the Watchmen. Demons, which we've seen, but we haven't fought those yet. I think we've just fought the Watchmen. And, oh, the dog. Remember remember that dog that we punched that the Hansas let loose on us? The common dogs seem to be no match for the messed up world of the surface, but they managed to survive despite being surrounded by mutants and human enemies, so they definitely are a threat to be considered, especially when you consider their keen senses and ability to easily alert their masters to your presence. They're good boys. Equipment. Ah, Bracer, that's the multi-function device. I think has a lot of functions on it. Tells you how much time you have left. Has a Geiger counter. Tells you if you're in the light. Probably some other stuff too. Weapons. Don't feel like reading that right now. Okay. So I probably just need to use the map, right? To like decide our next destination or something? How does this work? You can resume the journey or continue exploring the train. Well, I think we've explored the train pretty well. После долгих лет в подземелье, воздух поверхности казался нам невыразимо свежим, пьянил. Но эйфория, в которой пребывал экипаж, объяснялась не этим. У нашего путешествия появилась настоящая цель. Ее дал нам сигнал из правительственного бункера на Урале. 
20 лет мы считали, что нет больше ни правительства, ни президента, ни армейского командования. Оказывается, все они спаслись. Только где они были, пока мы жрали друг друга в подземельях метро? Когда доберемся до Ямантау, мы обязательно спросим об этом. Только доберемся ли? То, что когда-то было нашей страной, теперь, по словам Мельника, захвачено врагом, и нам придется прорываться с боем. Маленький отряд против оккупационных армий. Каковы шансы получить ответ? Yeah, that is so cool, that kilometer counter on the bottom right. Ты как, родной? Ничего не застудил? Держи, разморозим тебя немного. Oh, look at that sunrise or sunset. Отец только и думает об этом. Как заслужить прощение, вернуться в метро и зажить своей прежней жизнью. Uh, this track looks pretty rough. Are we... Okay, we're okay. Огневой контакт! Четверо! Дрезина! Всем руку! Общий сбор! I think they're, they're on a handcart over there. Артём, давай бегом в рубку! I should. Okay, sure. Артём, ты как, цел? Ah, we gotta get parts to fix the train before we can continue. Но вообще странно, что не раньше. Так часовые эти на дрезине чешут к мосту. Там у них укрепления какие-то. А вот тут, похоже, гражданские. Деревни и церковь на воде. Так, нужны данные. Артем, я тебе на карте пометил. О, oh, they're finally giving me the map. Узнать, что у них на мосту. Если получится языка взять еще лучше. Аня, прикроешь его. Есть. Может, и я с Артемом? Как усиление? Нет. Пока в ситуации не разберемся от Авроры ни на шаг. А они в паре уже работали, справятся. Ерма, когда сможешь починить Аврору? Пока не знаю. Может, It's been upgraded. Может, больше. Понял. Действуй. Орден, слушай мой приказ. Аврору подготовить к обороне. Степа, Дамир, ставим периметр. Так точно. Есть, князь. На тебе разведка близ лежащей территории. Принято. Идиот, прикроешь его с Авроры. Есть. Сэм и Алёша в резерве. Пошли, Артём. Есть, сэр. Новая модель, походная мастерская. Я как не начёшь. Более. Вещь незаменимая. Manuals inside, thanks. Where'd you get this from? Amazon? Да, материалы уж извини. Сам собирай. Пойдем, Артем. Вы там осторожнее только. Ладно. Странный блок пост этот. Jesus Christ, this game is beautiful. Man. На регулярную армию. 776 километров. Oh, I'm so excited to explore this. Let's take a look at this. Left mouse to check your journal. Hold right mouse to take a closer look at the tablet. Yeah, I remember this map. I love that it's a physical thing that you can actually pull out and this one looks upgraded and so much cooler oh my god it has different sides i'm totally ignoring what they're saying 
Let's just look at this map. This thing is amazing. This is a great example of the cobbled together technology. It looks so cool in the Metro series. So this map is kind of held on here with some little strips of duct tape. Uh, look at the top left of the map. There's a little light bulb there. I'm guessing that turns on if it's nighttime so you can see the map, probably. Uh, <laughs> there's a little like 9 volt battery on the left side beneath the compass thing. Probably supplying the battery plus anything else that might need power. Uh, I see some copper coils wrapped around on the left side for something. I don't know what. It's so fucking cool. What's on the other side? Also another light. A radio. A couple pencils. A pen. Oh, so fucking cool. Can I, like, use the radio? I want to poke the buttons. Uh... I think I could just look closer. It's the first settlement we've met so far. We need to find out who lives here, who shot at us, and what's behind the bridge. As usual, I'm going together with Anna. I'll have to watch out for her, too. That's such a cool map. So our goal is... Down there. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.